Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for this professional learning opportunity. I am Scott Mathias from NCEA and I will be facilitating this webinar today. Just a few housekeeping notes as people are joining. If you have questions during the presentation, feel free to use the Q&A or chat windows. We will be monitoring the questions and we'll try to answer them all in the allotted time. After today's webinar, I will email everyone a link to the recording. Today's webinar, Talking Points, How the Meeting Will Run, Legislative Briefing, Logistics, Getting Around Capitol Hill, is being led by Sister Dale McDonald, Vice President of Public Policy for NCEA, and Jennifer Daniels, Associate Director for Public Policy, Secretary of Catholic Education at the USCCB. Before I turn it over to our presenters, let us begin in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear loving Father in heaven, we humbly come before you at this hour with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thank you for allowing us to call upon you as this session begins. We know your word says that without you, we can do nothing. That is why we invite your presence to abide with us as we start this webinar. We ask you to protect us and guide us on what we are supposed to do. We will forever praise and glorify you, and we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sister Dale and Jennifer, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Scott, and thank you to all of you for joining us. We're happy to have you, and we look forward to working with you in person as we uh, gather for the actual CLS meeting. Um, today, we're going to run through what the day might look like um, when we go to Capitol Hill. So I'll um, introduce Jennifer, I would let Jennifer introduce herself basically, and then we'll start with the actual slides. Hello, I'm Jennifer Daniels. I work at the USCCB, um, the Secretary of Catholic Education, um, and my focus is K-12 federal policy for Catholic schools. Thank you. I don't see that this, is this being recorded, Scott? I'm not seeing a sign that it's being recorded. So- um, Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. The agenda for this afternoon is to try to do an overview of the full day schedule. What, what are we going to be doing uh, on that particular day? Uh, the maps of the Capitol Hill, we took out the Metro because we have that uh, solved. Uh, transportation options, how to plan your day, what run of the meeting, what is it gonna look like? What will we hope you would have the meeting look like when you get into the actual session? And then some reminders and some Q and A's. So the morning we'll be at the hotel and we will do a preparation at 9.30. Uh, we will look at the review of the state level graphics. I think we showed you once before and I'll try to uh, do it again. Um, And maybe not. Uh, hmm. Okay, it's not easily accessible. So um, there is a, a chart that is prepared for each state that has representation at at the conference, and that will that will have the national figures uh, and national data, and then what it looks like in your state. Uh, the state level is the lowest level that we, you know, or the highest of the lower levels that we can get to. So you'll have that. So we'll go over that with uh, Annie Smith, who is the um, data person at NCEA who put these graphics together with our production department and um, go over some of the talking points around what's on those, those charts. And then at 10 o'clock, the uh, USCCB Office of Government Relations, the, the lobbyists for USCC will talk about uh, and go over the talking points that we want you to be prepared to deal with in the Hill meetings. And it will be in writing. You'll have a copy of each of the talking points that we want to make uh, a conversation around. And then uh, give the, you a chance to ask some questions if you need a little clarification. You will have seen the basic points prior to coming to CLS. We will send you those in advance, uh, and probably just a few days before you come, since a lot of this is a still a moving target. We're not really sure who's moving when and where. 
uh, but we'll have the latest for you and uh, we'll have you prepared to be able to speak to them. So then at 1030, still there in the room, we will have tables set up where you will meet with the others from your state or geographic area, um, if you're the only one from a state and, and no one else available um, to go with you to certain offices, so that you'll have a chance to kind of get your act together and decide who's going to talk about which point when you're in which office. And then at 11 o'clock, we'll be transporting you up to the hill, and that will be um, uh, by bus. It'd be the most efficient way to get everybody there and make sure we have get everybody there and get everybody back. Mm -hmm. So then from 12 to 1, invite you to have lunch on your own at the Capitol Visitor Center or in the building for the first meeting. And we'll explain that in a minute. And then from 1 to 4, you're de dealing with the various meetings that you have scheduled. Hopefully, you will have three scheduled. Um, and then you will have some and some time to be able to look around the Capitol um, on your own if you have a time between meetings, possibly if you get them all done between 12, uh, between one and, and two, you may have two hours to go on a tour of the Capitol. And then at four, we're looking to get you back on the buses um, between four and 4.30 to get to the buses and then we'll return back to uh, the hotel. So that's a overall. This is the map of the Capitol complex. So when, uh, when we arrive mm -hmm. at the Capitol, the drop-off point is at the um, Visitors Capitol Center. Um, I am moving a cursor. Can you see that cursor that I'm moving there? So, whoops, that doesn't help. Um, so that you will be dropped off in this general area here. The Supreme Court will be behind you, the Library of Congress behind you. Uh, those. The library is very interesting if you have time before the bus will pick you up back there. So if you want to run in there before you, um, if you have time before the bus leaves, but the bus will leave. And if you're not on it, you will be left. And so maybe we should put the, the metro map back in for those who uh -oh. straggle and don't get on the bus. Yeah, you now, we'll, the capital we'll... south down there uh, by the Cannon Building. Really. <laughs> so this is the, the Capitol Visitor Center is underneath the Capitol. And <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> there is a very large cafeteria there, as well as a number of exhibits. So you will have some time there, but you do want to pay attention to where your first meeting is. On this side of the hill is the Senate, the Russell Building, the Dirksen Building, the Hart Building. Once you're inside one of these buildings, you can go from building to building. On this side of the Capitol are the House the Rayburn Building, the Longworth Building, and the Cannon Building. Again, once you're inside them, you can go from building to building. So it, once you get through security, stay on, and you're on one side, stay there. Hopefully, when you see the distance here, it could, could be a significant walk for some people, depending on you know how, how much you're used to walking and how quickly you can walk. So that if it's possible, schedule your Senate meetings together within one time frame and then work on the house at the other time or vice versa so that you are trying to run back and forth it means you have to go outside and go through security again at this point we don't believe the tunnels are open so you can't count on just running through and, and still being inside and not have to go through security that possibly could open up by the time you're there but it may not so you get the lay of the land. You're going to be dropped off somewhere here, and then you have time to eat your lunch, or you may want to go and do one or two meetings, come back and eat your lunch, and then maybe trek to the other side. So that um, is, you'll have this map in your uh, handouts the day you, you get your folder at the meeting. So the current protocols for security uh, are, are in flux, but this is what we think it is. We, we know it is today. So you have to be uh, escorted by staff so that if you have an appointment in Senator X's office, you need to have with you the name of the person you're meeting with and the phone number. And you will get that when you arrange the appointment because you have to call from outside the building, have the person come downstairs and meet you 
they will let security know, um, wave you in and let security know that they're going to escort you. Then you go through security, all right? So that you need to plan to spend some time at security. So the line may be five or six people, it may be 25. 26 people. So you have to work your way up the security line, up the steps or down the steps, depending on which building you're going in. And um, the less you bring with you, the better. You can't bring in water bottles, soda bottles. Um, you don't need your computer up there. You know, if you, uh, even your tablet might be better left at your hotel room, you know, it get what you need on your phone. You'll have your folder with the papers in it that you need. Um, and so it's the less you have to go through security, the better. Okay. Um, so I'll let Jennifer pick up here. You're on mute, Jen. Sorry. <laughs> Just one more thing um, about the escorts is when you make a meeting, let's say you make a meeting at one o'clock, I would also encourage you to say, hey, um, I have another meeting at two o'clock. And is there anyone in your office who'd be willing to escort me to my next meeting and actually plan that in advance? Um, because if you get that worked out, then you can avoid going through security again, even if you have to go from the house side to the Senate side, they can get you through. It's just, you can't go without an escort. And that way you can stay in the tunnels a lot more and avoid security. So it would be nice to go ahead or it would be okay to go ahead and just ask them and it will probably be, you know, a staff assistant or even an intern that escorts you. Um, and, you know, they either have extra interns or they don't, but it's worth asking and do that in advance so that you know that you've got that help to get from one meeting to another. Um, they may also, you know, if you're in the same building, if you're lucky enough to be in the same building, it would be much more amenable, but it, it's worth asking. And then again, when you're there, um, and you finish a meeting, you say, I'm going to, could you um, escort me or have someone escort me? Okay, so now we're going to talk about um, the schedule of the day and what your day is going to look like. So the first thing is um, plan your day, kind of think about what you want your day to look before you get here. Um, and this is no right or wrong, it's up to you. You may also wanna have this conversation with other members of your state delegation um, or your Catholic conference, whoever is kind of, whoever you're working with for your Senate meetings and things like that. Um, you may wanna figure out the Senate meeting kind of first because that those are, you're doing with a bigger group and that will impact other people. So if you're having a bunch of people go to a Senate meeting, get that meeting scheduled as quickly as possible. And then y'all can figure out the rest of it based on that meeting. Um, so first of all, you know, how many meetings do you have? Are you trying to go to both Senate meetings or are y'all going to split up as a delegation? You know, maybe, you know, everyone from California probably should not go to both of the California Senate meetings. You might probably not all fit in a building. So maybe the Senate, the California delegation splits in half and you each go to one Senate meeting. Um, so now you have two meetings instead of three. Well, that's okay, you know. Um, and then looking at where your meetings are located, um, again, that map um, will send you a link to that exact map so that you can know how far apart your meetings are and how much time you need to give yourself. Um, and then when do you want to eat lunch? I know this is <laughs> sounds like less of an important thing, but uh, trust me, you don't want to be halfway, you know, hiking across from one building to the other and just realize how starving you are. Um, and you've got like a five block radius before you're even anywhere. So just think about that. You, would you like to just knock out lunch and grab something quickly at the Starbucks in the hotel, or maybe you grab a sandwich at the Starbucks, don't eat it. And you're going to eat it after your first meeting, you'll have it in your bag. Um, or you can just plan to get there, go to the Capitol Visitor Center, have lunch. But if that's the case, you don't want to schedule a meeting until like at least 1.30 at the earliest, because um, giving yourself enough time to, to get through security. So, um, you know, that's all fine. Um, and then if you are interested in a capital tour, this is something you definitely want to reserve before you arrive. Um, and if there's a group of you that would like to do it, you can do it in a group. Um, if you just type in the Capital Visitor Center, um, there's very clear instructions to do meetings there. And, you know, we 
talked about kind of trying to help y'all organize them, but quite frankly, it's just impossible for us to do that because all of your meetings are going to be all different times. So that just doesn't make a lot of sense. So it's real easy to do it. It's very user friendly. And if you're interested, I would encourage you. If for some reason you don't get around to doing it or your meetings change or you have a last minute uh, meeting come up, you can sometimes go to the Capitol Visitor Center and get a, a tour at the last minute. It just really depends on how busy the place is. Uh, and you may get lucky because it's recess, so it won't be as busy as it could be. And also, then also um, mm -hmm. you have to go through security to get into the Capitol Visitor Center as well. It's not just the, the, the House and Senate building. So um, that may take a little time as the three buses, we're expecting probably three buses arrive. So be mindful of that too for your first appointment. It could take you 20 minutes or more to get into the Capitol Visitor Center with the crowd that we were bringing. You don't need an escort to get in, but you do need to line up. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a really good point, Sister Dale, that we didn't say earlier. You do not need to call anybody to get inside the Capitol Visitor Center, but you just can't leave that kind of public area without an escort from there. Um, and then finally, do you want to take some pictures? Again, it seems like it's a less important thing, but you're going to be in some of the most beautiful buildings in the entire country, and I still get excited walking up the Capitol steps. It's just so beautiful. Um, so there's um, big, huge steps going up to the Capitol. You often see on the news, the senators running up, up them to go vote. Well, those are open to the public. You can just walk right up there um, as long as you're outside the building. And that's a beautiful place. The Supreme Court is a beautiful place to take pictures. And then the Library of Congress is absolutely gorgeous. There's all these fountains around it. Um, so you may want to do that. Um, and if so, um, you know, these complexes are very large, so it takes a while if you're at the Rayburn building and you're like, oh, before we leave, we want to get a picture at the Supreme Court, you know, that's a probably 20 minute walk. So um, just kind of budget that in uh, if it's a priority for you. Um, okay, next. Can you go forward, Sister Dale? Okay. Okay, so the next three slides, three or four slides, this is actually a handout. So I just cut and pasted this handout. I put it in the PowerPoint. So we're gonna give you this um, at CLS. You'll have this with you. This will be just a aid to help you get through step-by-step -step the parts of the meeting and, and, um, uh, and, and including talking points. So um, the first thing is arrival. So, you know, this is very, very important. Um, arrive to the building at least 20 minutes early to get through security. And of course, that means call for your escort first, then go through security. You want to try to be giving yourself time to be at the office itself five minutes early. So especially if you're already in another building, you are able to get through, you know, try to be there at least five minutes early to the congressional office. Um, and the buildings are big too. I can't like we keep saying this over and over, everything takes longer than you think it's going to take. The Rayburn building is about a four block big building. <laughs> it's huge. So, um, and all the hallways look the same. I always get lost in Rayburn still. And all the numbers um, aren't then, necessarily so sequential. Office, just go ahead and walk in. Um, you don't have to knock or give in permission to enter. Um, and then there'll be a staffer. As soon as you walk in the door, there'll be someone sitting right there. Um, and you'll just say your name and who are you um, have an appointment with. Um, and they often ask for a business card. This is kind of a common practice is they'll say, oh, do you have a business card? And then they take your business card back to the staffer so that the staffer knows exactly who is outside. Um, and then the staffer will come out a few minutes later to get you um, and direct you to the to the conference or, or to the, where they're going to have the meeting. Um, it may be a conference room, it may be another office down the hallway, and often in the house side, especially, you're just sitting right there in the reception area. Sometimes they have a little table, sometimes it's a couch, um, and sometimes the meetings are actually in the hallway. And just don't be offended by that, you know, if you're in the hallway, it's very, very common. And even the members themselves do the meetings in the hallway that the house side just does not have a lot of individual space. Um, but go ahead and allow the staffer to direct you and get to where you're going rather than kind of starting small talk and just, you know, he'll say, okay, follow me and just, you know, 
just get going um, and that will allow the meeting to progress, um, I think more smoothly because you're not breaking it up. <clears throat> and okay. maybe, um, you know, only one, when you walk in the office, one person give the card to the receptionist. It'd be a good idea for all of you to have a business card with you because sometimes what they like to do is when you, if you're lucky and you're sitting down at a table, you know, they want you to hand them a card and they kind of get look around the table. Sometimes they arrange them in order on, you know, depends on, again, the space that they have. Mm -hmm. Or in the background. Um, so that they kind of put your name and face as, as they're going around the room when you're introducing yourself. So mm -hmm. yeah, definitely bring lots of business cards. <laughs> okay, you go forward. Um, okay, next is going to be introductions. Um, and this is really important because um, <laughs> they often will be, you know, they often have lots of back to back meetings and just a refresher of exactly who you are, who you're with and um, is, is very important. Um, so again, if you haven't given them a card, you could give them a card at that time um, and let everybody go around the table and say who they are and then um, Often the staffer doesn't like want to talk about themselves very much. They're there to listen to you, but, you know, just ask, have a question that you might want to ask the staffer, you know, oh, are you from the district? You know, um, how long have you worked for the congressman? Are you from the state? Um, and just kind of break the ice a little bit and you get a sense uh, about, about him. Uh, and often they often start talking about school because they know it's an education meeting. So they'll say, oh, I went to a Catholic school, things like that. That almost always comes up. <laughs> um, so then we want to thank him and then tell him the purpose of the meeting. So I've written kind of just a little script here about the purpose of the, the conference, why everybody's in town, um, who you represent, and then in, you know, the shortest element possible, you know, we're here to talk about the impact of federal education programs on our schools. And that's the, the gist of why we're there. Um, so keep that real simple. That way he has a good sense of, of what's coming ahead. Okay. And you'll see we've put in, put some suggested number of minutes for each of these things. So that was three minutes. <laughs> and when we get to the end of this kind of run of minute, we're at about 30 minutes. So it may seem like three minutes is very quick. Well, it is very quick, but yeah, you got to snap to it. So you, again, don't waste too much time on the small talk, you know, get to the uh, meat of the meeting. Um, okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is just kind of an overview of Catholic education and um, data that you will be provided and the contributions to the common good. So these are some suggestions here, some bullet points, but um, you'll have your own NCA data infographic that you can share. This is where we've discussed before. Hopefully you bring something from your diocese to tell them about your diocese and your schools. Um, whether that's, you know, a, an annual report or, a, you know, a snapshot, you know, whatever that is, whatever you're proud of. Um, and then you'll have some of these national statistics on your infographic as well that you can highlight. And, you know, you don't need to necessarily read every data point on the infographic, but maybe pick one or two that you're particularly proud of or that you have an anecdote from your diocese and then say, you know, this infographic and, and you know, and get it out and show it to them and say this infographic has much more um, specific details about, about our school's data as well. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so after that nice introduction, so everyone's clear how amazing Catholic schools are, we'll get to the meat of the program and these will be our talking points. So again, um, we're not gonna go over all the talking points today, but this is a kind of review of webinar number one, where we talked about all of these in more detail. And again, we will give you the talking points. We'll give you very specific um, bullet points. And then along with that are, are what we call the asks. What are we asking for? Um, so for federal education programs, you know, we wanna make sure equitable services is included in federal education programs. For school choice, we'd like the member to sponsor the bill that we're working on. So we'll have a very, you know, one sentence specific ask. And this is about, this should be the bulk of the meeting. So we've got 10 to 12 minutes here. Okay. 
And then now you can kind of have a discussion with the staffer. And, you know, he may have interrupted you before that to ask a question, and that's totally fine. But in my experience, they normally stay really quiet until you're done, and then they talk. Um, so um, this, you know, who knows what will come up? They may say, oh, you know, we, we love this bill. Tell us more about it. They may say, I've never heard of equitable services before. Can you go back to that? Because I'm just not familiar with equitable services and tell me what that means. Um, they may say, you know, our boss has already co-sponsored the school choice bill and we're so excited about it and we can't wait to co-sponsor it again next year. Who knows? But definitely take some notes here about what is important. What did the staffer kind of hone in on? Um, he'll reference his member. He'll probably say, well, my member did this or my member thinks this. So really try to jot that down about what was important to the member. Um, and then what is it that, you know, has has really caught their attention? What did they want to go back to? And then, eh, unfortunately, was there something that kind of they weren't so excited about that you talked about? Um, you know, did they really say uh, we have no interest in school choice in this office? You know, that may be the case. Um, I use the word hostility. It may be a strong word. I, you know, I think there's only been one or two times where the the staffers were a little bit, you know, hostile, but, um, but generally speaking, they may agree to disagree with you. And, you know, uh, you're here to share your story and to tell your story, not to get into an argument with anyone. Um, you're just speaking on behalf of yourself and your children and your schools and just leave it at that, you know, if there is any of that. And that that's what, you know, with going back to the first webinar where we talked about doing your homework, you know, knowing, um, what the member is interested in, what committees he or she is on, and you know what they have co-sponsored or what, you know, so that you don't put yourself in a position where you're raising an issue that you know they have very little interest in or have been really outspoken against. So mm -hmm. that's why it's important to know who they are and what they're about and um, be prepared to tailor the remarks um to to match who you're dealing with mm -hmm. okay and then time to wrap it up keep an eye on the clock it's really easy for this meeting to go for 45 minutes and you don't even realize it because you know you're there talking about all these great schools and your students and you're so excited so really try to keep an eye on the clock um we, we talked about this on another webinar but I didn't put it on this PowerPoint is, you know, um, back to the beginning of the meeting, it's always good to ask if the staffer has a hard stop. So, you know, if it's a two o'clock meeting, you can say, do we need to conclude by 2.30, you know, get a sense. And, and he may say, oh, I don't have another meeting after this. We can talk as long as you want, you know, so that's great. But it's better to set the stage for that before the meeting is over or before the meeting starts. So then, you know, when to wrap it up. Um, so we'll thank them for their time. Make sure you've shared business cards if you haven't yet. Um, I would encourage you to invite this congressman to a school, to any school, let them know Catholic Schools Week is coming up. Um, and if there is an interest, if they say, oh yeah, we'd love to do that, then come up with a plan on how you're going to follow up. Um, you know, who's the best person for me to email? Should I call the congressman scheduler? You know, see what you can do. Or maybe they, you know, this would obviously happen back in the district. So maybe he'll say, oh yeah, let me give you the phone number for the district director and let's have the district director coordinate a visit, you know, in January. So, um, you know, get a commitment. That'd be great. Um, and then hopefully you can take a group photo. Usually that's outside by their sign and the state flag. Um, and then one more round of thank yous and pat yourself on the back for a great meeting. You, you survived. And also, you know, I'd say be mindful of one another, you know, it, if a person is to speak about this, you know, remember that he or she is going to speak and give him or her time to do so. You know, it's easy to get carried away, but, um, you know, so it's a group effort, not a solo. So, <laughs> yeah, which is a great reminder of something for the state delegation meetings before you go to Capitol Hill. You know, we've got three talking points. Maybe you divide those up. Um, maybe one person does the contribution to common good, maybe one person does the statistics, and then one person does the talking points. You can break it up before you go. Um, we, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Nope, I'm ready to move on. Okay, well, we have, uh, um, sorry, I'm in the chat box. Um, I don't know why it's not moving. Oh, I can see it. 
Oops. Okay. Now oh, it moved. <laughs> Paul. Paul has lots of questions here. We love Paul. Yeah. Do we need an escort for the entire time that we're in a building? No. Once you get to the office, the escort can leave you. Well, normally the staffer from that office is going to bring you to their office. So there's that. Um, and then once you're there, so I mean, what I would recommend is once you're there, if you don't have a plan for how to get to your next meeting, just ask the staff assistant at the front desk and just say, could you help us get to our next meeting or can someone, you know, direct us or something along those lines and they will most likely help you out. Um, we are, okay, so when are we going to know everyone else attending from our state? Um, I would just encourage, I mean, I think most of you have regular meetings with the superintendents in your region and in your state. Um, so I would try to maybe coordinate a, a Zoom call or a conference call if y'all want to do something along those lines for anyone who's attending. We do have, um, you know, people are registering here at NCEA. So if you want to reach out um, to Sister Dale, we can connect you to find out who else is coming from your state. Right. I think, you know, when we get closer to the date, we may be able to make up lists of who's registered from, who's registered in terms of having sent us what offices they're going to see. Um, so we'll try our best, but, you know, we have a strong history of last minute registrations. So, um, we'll work with what we've got. Yeah. And then the last one, um, Metro is in some flux, there's some construction and some shutdowns of stations. It could take 45 minutes to an hour, uh, easily to get up there on the Metro. That's when we went to buses. Um, you know, we were initially thinking of having, having, having everyone have a, an experience on Metro, but um, we've gone to buses for efficiency's sake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if, you know, if you have a call with, you know, a senator and you really want to have this meeting and the meeting's going to be at 11 o'clock and our buses are leaving at 11 o'clock and you want to just take an Uber, you know, that's fine too. Right. Sometimes, sometimes you have limited um they have limited limited windows so you know you are welcome to yeah. you know go Thank to you as well um but i think metro is probably not a great option it would i would uber okay so i think that's all we missed can we go back sister to meeting reminders scheduling reminders which one the You know what's happened? The chat box is in my way. Okay. Okay. Is this where you want to be? Uh, back one more, please. Fourteen. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So just a couple reminders. This is from last time's webinar. Um, uh, we gave you a list of things to look into and to research about your members. So it's good to start that now. That could take, you know, a few times for a few different members. Um, and then assuming everything goes as planned and Congress goes in recess on Friday, like they're supposed to, it'd be a good idea to wait and not request your meeting till next week, um, uh, first week of October. And please do emphasize that you are flying to Washington, D.C. and that you've come here to have an in-person meeting. We have been told that a lot of offices, if it's in recess, they just have a virtual day because they're in recess. However, um, if they know that there's someone coming in and they've got an event, they might stack a bunch of meetings back to back. So um, let's give them a heads up and make sure you emphasize that you are a constituent that flew to Washington for an in-person meeting. Um, and then also remember that we have a uh, Google form. It's just a very short, quick Google form to log your confirmed meetings once they're confirmed. I put that in the chat. It's at the very, very top of the chat. Um, this is really, really important so that we, number one, have enough materials. We're gonna give y'all a leave behind folder for every single meeting. So we wanna have enough of those. And then we also wanna help you guys coordinate um, if for some reason, uh, you know, we see that 
there's, you know, if we've got a Senate meeting in California and someone calls us up and say, well, I don't have any meetings, I couldn't figure out any meetings, and we can say, oh, well, there's a Senate meeting at 1.30, would you like to join that meeting? So we want to kind of know, you know, and help people plan, uh, plan their meetings, and then that will also be really important when you have your state delegation meetings uh, the day of on, on Tuesday morning, when all of your state delegation meets together, we'll make sure to make sure everybody knows which meetings are happening um, for that state. And so everybody, you know, in case we need how, how we need to split those up and things like that. So again, remember to coordinate with your Catholic conference and or um, a group, uh, you know, your superintendents as a group for the Senate meetings, because we don't want to have 10 people requesting a Senate meeting, just one person from the state representing, um, requesting the Senate meetings. Um, and um, as a reminder, if you were not on the last webinar, we have a handout um, that's called How to Schedule a Meeting, and it's got all the details, where to get their phone numbers, where to get the information, um, and that handout has been emailed out a couple times, but it will also be in the follow-up uh, email from today. Okay. So looking ahead, we, um, you know, future webinars or future planning, um, we're going to kind of just play it by ear the next week or two and see how everybody's doing now that y'all are kind of starting to do your research, starting to request your meetings. If we're getting a lot of questions or a lot of concerns, we might, um, you know, have another webinar. We're thinking we might just, uh, if we get a lot of questions, record something that we can uh, post and then you guys could just watch it whenever you want. Um, we'll, of course, continue to send updates uh, if anything changes on Capitol Hill, but you will get the talking points, you'll get the run of the meeting handout, you'll get the maps, you'll have all of that in writing for you, um, and we'll we'll send out those talking points and before you even get to Washington as well. Um, and then don't forget the day of, the morning of, we'll have the USCCB government relations representative there. Um, we'll go through the handout, we'll go through the talking points, and then we'll go through all the documents in the leave behind folders so that you know what you're handing over. Um, and then you have time to answer, ask questions and then meet with your state to coordinate. So we don't, we want to provide you every single thing you need so that everyone is confident and calm and no one is, you know, worried or stressed out. And we want to make this as smooth as possible for you. So, um, well, the more we can get to you, the faster we will. And if you think you need something that we haven't mentioned, like definitely let us know, please tell us, and we will do our best to provide you with any resources that you need. All right, any more questions? I don't see any more. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay. There's our information. Um, and don't forget the links to the previous webinars. They're just on YouTube, so they're very easy to find. They are on the chat right now, and the Google form to log your meetings is in the chat right now. They're in the chat. Mm -hmm. So that should cover. You now, it's important that we, you know, be prepared as we can, but we also need to be flexible because things happen um, and we will you know work as hard as we can to make sure you have all the up-to-date information but um, if we have to make some last minute changes you know we will do what we can to make sure everyone has a good experience and um, and, and has a day that uh, is profitable for everyone so mm -hmm. Flexibility. The, last thing, the, the last thing I'll say regarding that is make sure you wear very comfortable shoes. I don't think we've actually put this in writing anywhere, sister. I cannot encourage you enough. And if you want to wear fancy shoes, then bring a pair of, you know, flats to change out of or something. Um, everything, everywhere you're walking is either concrete or like marble. And it's very, very uh, rough on your feet. So. <laughs> Um, there's another uh, question in the chat. I can't see the Google form in the chat. For what we have scheduled. Um, the Google form was not in the chat. Wasn't that in a link we sent out? Well, I just, um, yeah, I just put it up there oh, at the very okay. beginning. So sometimes they just start scrolling up too high. Let me just do it again. Let's see if that works. 
And so that is the form after you schedule a meeting and you're just logging that you have a confirmed meeting. That's what that's for. I don't see the link in, in mine. I... Oh, you don't see it either? It says no. to everyone. Um, let me... Okay, Scott, I'm sending it to you, Scott, to post. Maybe um, for some reason mine isn't working. I just direct message you. It'll be, we'll also put it in the follow up email. It'll come to the in the email that we send after this webinar ends. Scott, it says here Scott would like to answer the question live. Oh yeah, you can just put that in there. Okay, it's in the um it's in the chat box. The law the uh, con confirmation sheet is in the chat box. Okay everyone. <clears throat> okay. Great. I don't see any more questions. I don't see anything else in the chat box. So please give either of us a call or an email um, if you have some questions or concerns or you need some additional help, we'd be happy to work with you. Okay, so I'll stop the screen share and um, you can say goodbye to everyone. All right, thanks for participating. Okay, thank you all. We look forward to seeing you in the nation's capital or mm -hmm. close to it <laughs> in Crystal City. Okay, okay. bye. bye.